Hi, I'm Paul McAndrew. I'm the co-director of the Wellness Station. And this is Lisa Overcash with me here today. She's been so gracious as to come by and talk to us about the work that she's been doing here with myself and the Feldenkrais Method and the physical therapy usage of the Feldenkrais Method. So thank you, Lisa, for coming. You're welcome. And I'd like to introduce River. This is Lisa's, River. Lisa's service dog. You want to say, say anything there. about River? Hello. He's a three-year-old golden retriever named River of Peace is his full name. We call him River. And He's, he was recently in New York. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was. <laughs> he was the pet of the year for the good, well, finalist, that is, pet of the year finalist for the Good Morning America Pet of the Year contest. We were there in December. And he was one of the finalists. It was great. Yeah, I bet. He's a beautiful dog. Mm -hmm. And He gets gonna... under here for, his sesh, for my session place. Good boy, stay. Right. Good job. Good, River. Thank you. And so, and I'm, I'm going to give a little bit of a history that Lisa brought with that to us. And I'm not going to mention why Lisa has River as a service dog just now. I'm going to let you kind of wonder about that a little bit. And I think you're going to be surprised when you find out one of the situations, one of the conditions that Lisa is dealing with and how amazingly well she is dealing with it. So, I want to just mention a brief history. Um, Lisa has had some back issues that date back to the early 2000s. She's actually had three back procedures and right now is functioning at a quite high level, dancing, etc., with a fusion from L2 down to L5. And also, she's had her right hip replaced and two revisions, I believe? Yes. I Actually, think. three revisions. Three revisions, yeah, yeah. So, and very actively dancing. So, Lisa, what, what brought you to the wellness station? Well, I see a doctor in uh, Raleigh that's an integrative physician. I've been with her for about 10 years, treating several challenges that other doctors have had less results that I'm pleased with. And so she suggested a Feldenkrais physical therapy method might be able to calm down the back pain and I'd be happier and function smoother with less pain. So had you had some physical therapy before? Yes, I have. Over the years, actually, I've gone several times saying, is there anything you can possibly do? I mean, I was even willing to have another surgery to minimize the pain if they thought that was possible. Wow. I mean, I didn't want to do that, but hey, if my life would be better and they thought it was possible, then I was going to consider it. But they felt like that was not an option. It was not going to make it any better because it was already functioning better than the average person under the circumstances that I had. And then they said, let's try some more physical therapy. So yeah. over the years, I tried at least three different locations with physical therapy, your traditional physical therapy. And every time they assess me, they would say, well, you're moving better than I would have thought you'd been able to move. And your exercises that you're already doing when you work out are a higher level of exercises than in which I would expect you to do. So that was irrelevant for me to be in physical therapy treatment every time I went. Yeah, so you just went, you just went making the progress you would hope, hope to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you came, what you said to me was that you were, some of the goals that you were looking for was you wanted to decrease your dependence on any kind of medication, which apparently has been happening. Right, I've been able to cut it by a fourth. Great, great. Yes. Yeah, and I think we should mention that Lisa started coming in September. Right. And with uh, just recently we had our ninth session. Right. And I think it was around the fourth or the fifth session when you started realizing that your evening med you weren't actually recognizing that it was time to do it yes. because you weren't feeling the need for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Generally, I would take them every 12 hours, and then before I realized it, it was more like 16 hours. And I'm like, oh, my back hurts just a little bit, and I checked the time, and it was three hours past yeah. the normal time. And I'm like, well, hey, maybe I can get away with taking less during this time. Great. So I yeah. certainly did, and I do that pretty regularly now. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. So. You must be curious, well, what do we do? What's different? So what do you think about showing a little bit of the pelvic clock lesson sitting sure. on the balance disc? Sure. Okay? Yeah. And, and, and then when you're doing that, 
I'll explain a little bit of the rationale behind why we would have chosen this lesson. Okay, sure. And I think this was one of the first ones we did. It was the first one, yeah. very much so. Yeah. So, Lisa was taught to come and sit on the balance disc and to imagine that in the center of that balance disc is a little clock dial. It's a classic Feldenkrais lesson called the pelvic clock. And so if you were to imagine a clock with underneath, it's about the size of a 50 cent piece, and if you could imagine that underneath the center of the balance disc, if Lisa were to slump a little bit and just round her back, she'd be moving back towards 6, and then she'd be putting pressure more towards 12. And why don't you go ahead back and forth with that a little bit. Now we're only going to show a little bit because of, of time and, and just interest, but um, th this will give you an idea of the kind of lesson that we began with, and now, I'd like you to pay particular attention to what you're feeling in your mid-back. And when you drop back, maybe you can let your head look down a little bit. That's it. And if, see if you can feel that that brings the... That was what I wasn't doing that oh, I noticed that, that, yeah, I'm like, yeah. yeah, I need to remember to make yeah. sure that the whole spine is engaged. Yes, yes, and yes. And the cervical spine of the neck is connected to the lower spine. And when I move now... I don't try to isolate the spine. I let it work together to help each other. Beautiful. Now, why don't you go ahead and let's, we're going to jump ahead a little bit. Why don't you do, do the clock? And I'm going to take this plastic spine here. And while you're going around the imaginary clock. So I'm going to go in a circle. Yep, make the circle. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, I watched Lisa walk. And you can probably tell from even just watching her when she was sitting there. And in that first se session when I watched her walk, and remember, Lisa has a fusion of these lower vertebrae. And what I saw was a very, very straight, actually not so participatory thoracic spine. What that told me is that if she wants to be living life normally, she wants to reach up for something that's up on that higher cabinet. And that lower back is fused. Well, typically, as you probably know or you can imagine, very commonly, the level or two above a fusion starts to become a problem because the person is fulcruming all at that level. But what we said was, well, wait a minute. Why not get the thoracic spine to participate more so that instead of this, when she's looking up or reaching up or doing a dance move where you're extending back, she's in fact doing that. So the work is being spread out. So that's, what, that's why I chose this lesson, because when I watched you walk, the average person watching you walk would say, would be, uh, the average woman would definitely be jealous and say, wow, look at how beautifully she holds herself. And you do. But what I also appreciated was, yeah, but I don't see enough responsiveness in that mid-back, especially in light of the fact that the lower back isn't able to participate the way it normally would be right. for the fusion. Yeah. Okay. So this is one of the things that we began with. And we're going to give you a little bit more information on another video. Thanks for tuning in.